morning, everybody. It's 10 a.m. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. All right. So welcome to this month's Academy for Program Coordinators. I am posting and reposting the link to the attendance form and the evaluation form on the chat. This session have, is being recorded and will be shared um, later uh, today or tomorrow in the Facebook group. And um, those of you who have LinkedIn, um, there's a LinkedIn group on the Academy for Program Coordinators. Plus I will send it via email. <clears throat> This month, um, I am really excited because I get to talk to you. I hope you don't get sick and tired of me. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> next month, we have uh, the topic of developing and nurturing professional relationships. And I think it's a topic that's dear and near to everybody as this is part of what we do. We nurture those professional relationships with not only our residents, but our staff and um, um, and I'm sorry, somebody's trying to get, go in. Um, as we try to nurture and develop those relationships with our faculty, our staff, um, colleagues, everybody. Um, it's really, really um, requested, it's a highly requested topic. So, uh, and then obviously there is no session in December because we are smack in the middle of um, recruitment, um, CCC, semi-annuals, you name it. You also may have noticed that I made a change to the March session when we were working on the schedule, I did not notice that it falls in the middle of match week. So I pushed it back a week because I know hopefully all of us will have matched fully into our programs, but in, that only happens in a perfect world. We are not in a perfect world. So <laughs> um, that way you have all... Um, um, we all have the time we need in case we have to soap. So, and then the week before is ACGME, which I hope to see um, and meet some people there. Um, and you know, it's it's a really busy season. So welcome, welcome. I am reposting the links again. Um, and let's get started. Today's topic, um, let me be honest with you, it's a topic that I'm starting myself to learn, which is about coaching and how coaching can be used with, um, we can use it as, as a tool. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. What screen do you see? Do you see the whole presentation or the presenter view? Presenter. Okay, perfect. The reason I ask is that sometimes I mess it, I mess up and I get the presenter view shown instead of the, the presentation. <laughs> so in the session, we are talking about how coordinators can be coach, you know, and this is something that I have seen in multiple instances. Um, and I'm really starting to learn a little bit more and I'm hoping to do something a little bit more formal here. I don't know if you have seen it in other programs in your institutions. So I really would like for us to have discussions on best practices if you have the, um, experienced coaching before. So down to the objectives, we are going to define what is coaching, how a coordinator can be become a coach and obtain insight on how coaching can be applied. Um, but let me ask you this first. Do you think you can be a coach? Feel free to unmute yourself or put in the chat if you feel based on what you have heard before, not with this, 
based on what you have heard before, can you really feel and you think that you can be a coach? So this is Summer from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not a coach because there are too many coaches out there. You don't have the assistant coaches or what I would call the Chiefs and the Indians. You don't have the Indians that, that are in the background. So I consider myself to be an Indian in the background that can get the work done so the coach can look good. Okay. Anybody else? I was going to say, um, I think the minute we become coordinators and we become comfortable in our skin, right? Because it, at first, when if you're not used to the world and stuff, you're like, number one, what did I get into? <laughs> number two, you you have to learn what you learn, what to know and what to say. But absolutely, I feel like it. I mean, I've done this 25 years and it was probably a good 10 years before I was like. Helping be comfortable with. Um, coaching people through things, I mean, and life situations. And I mean, as a coordinator, you get hit with everything from the professional to the, how do I sign up for my medical insurance on my, you know, first week of residency. So um, I think absolutely. Okay. Anyone else? I I'm seeing some comments here in the chat about um, some people feel that they are coached to their peers and staff assistants. Somebody said they're too busy to coach. Um, and I like this last comment says that, yes, um, um, that you can be a coach, but also be coached at the same time. I, I have an input on this. Uh, this is Fran from Banner University Medical Center in Phoenix. Hey, how are you? Is, I'm fine. How about you today? Good. To me, a coach is a person that's going to encourage, encourage it, encourage and educate, educate. So I think anyone could be a coach if they have the tools, the knowledge and the heart. Thank you. Nice. Anybody else? I like encourage and educate. I think if we did a word cloud, that would probably be my favorite. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I, li I liked the heart, but I'm seeing a lot of concerns in the chat as well about the time commitment that it takes to be a coach. That That is true, but you can also be an informal coach, not you know put it in, in a set schedule where you are coaching somebody. You can be uh, an unofficial coach too. Fair. And yes, I agree with some of the comments where they say that our jobs are ever changing. That is completely true. Our roles change so much and they have, and they continue changing. You know, I'm loving this, uh, the these comments that are coming up here. Um, let me be honest with you. They are really, really refreshing. And when I did, I recently did uh, the American Academy of Med, um, the American Medical Association. <laughs> So we 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 have so many academies that we follow and and talk about. The American Medical Association has a academic coaching workshop um, that I participated at actually in August, and and it was really um, enlightening because I thought a coach could be somebody. Uh, like most people uh, could be somebody who is there uh, full time and has to have the time commitment, but there's also informal coaches. And I like that, you know, and um, I feel that we all in a role can be either a coach, a mentor, an advisor, a supporter. They're all, they're not the same. They're all similar, but they're not the same. And um, I'm trying to build something as a coach because it's 
it's something that grows from inside of me. You might not agree with it or you might agree with it, but it's something that I agree uh, that is um, resonates inside of me, um, especially since I got, um, I started working with um, the university here in Texas. And, you know, I want to be able to be that for more people in the long run. So that's something that for me is, is what I, what I'm feeling like being a coach. Um, and again, I, I never thought about being some more informal coach, but I've, but it's been coming. So the goal of coaching as applied in medical education is to support a developmental process whereby an individual learner meets regularly over the time with a faculty coach to create goals, identify strategies to manage assistant and potential challenges, improve academic performance and further professional identity development toward reaching the learner's highest goal. And this was um, shared by D Dr. Nicole Diorio. She's the author of um, that article where she presents this. And my variation is, yes, you, a formal coach helps create this, but an informal coach also supports all of this. Just, you know, you, you, you do it in the more laid back setting where you're doing these conversations instead of taking notes and making sure that you're following guidelines and all that stuff. So what is coaching? Coaching is a promising approach that allows fa facilitation of learner development. Also helps learners reach their full potential. How can I put it in for a coordinator perspective? You start in a role, you most, most of us start in this role without knowing squat. Let me be honest with you. We, we don't know squat. We don't know nothing about being a coordinator or uh, graduate medical education, uh, you know, and that was me 15 plus years ago. I did not know what graduate medical education was, but, you know, we take it up on ourselves. We start learning, we start, um, practicing, re reviewing all these requirements that they change practically every year. And we're like, oh my God, not again. <laughs> um, you know, and then when I when I reached a point where it was comfortable enough, I felt myself that I was ready to be kind of a mentor to people. And then now I'm I want to transition to be a coach at some point. But it's because now I feel comfortable enough that I have learned so much in my role. I've learned from colleagues that are really smarter than me, and I have one close by, um, because I rely so much on not only my knowledge, but other people's knowledge and their experiences. And that's what makes the part of mentoring and coaching so excited because you don't have to be an expert. You just have to be present for, for that person. And honestly, I still have a lot to learn. I am still learning and I'm a nerd and I'm proud to say it. I am a, such a nerd that I keep reading and keep researching and keep doing stuff just to get to be get myself better knowledge in this field. But now based on the definition and based on what I've told you so far, do you believe that you can be a coach? Feel free to mute and put it in the chat. Uh-huh. Yes, Patrice.
All right. Anybody has um a little bit of insight based on what I'm asking right now? Feel free to unmute um or put it in the chat. Hi, this is Patrice. Hey. And and I and what I put in the chat was that we we tend to wait until we are so called perfect before we think that we can share because our our roles do like someone says it's ever changing things happen we think we're not smart enough in a certain area and but when we share we also receive feedback so as we're coaching and teaching even we may not consider it coaching but we're we're helping someone. And we know more than what we think we know or what we feel like we can share. And so we, we should not wait until we feel like we are perfect in our roles before we can share. We should share what we learn, the good and the bad, because we learn from both sides. I was going to agree with Patrice. Um, I'm a, I'm a mentor for AFMA and I've done several people across the country and then just locally. Um, but uh Number one, when I started years ago, there was no mentor. There was no there was no residency coordinator background. I mean, I, there was like one in our institution. So um, I've also, the people I mentor from, I've also learned like, cause they, they're going out trying to learn their path. And I'm like, oh, they've taught me faster, quicker ways to do things. Um, and then you also build a community of support. I mean, I had to reach out to Patrice for something this year that we couldn't, our our institution couldn't get for us. And so, I mean, those relationships are so valuable. Anybody else? I, I'm seeing some of the comments and, you know, I, I, I am loving all the comments coming in here um, because, you know, we, you probably have been coaching and mentoring and advising and you haven't noticed it, you know, like I said, you can do it informally. You don't have to have a formal coaching at least in in our what our role is you don't have to have a formal coaching um position to coach people yes it is thank you i'm gonna try to say your name sophia did i say it right <laughs> she says that there's no problem with interaction because this is a high interpersonal role and it's true we we interact with so many people at so many so many times a day i i mean i love coming into the office and start interacting you know i do i'm a true introvert in true introvert fashion i do need my quiet time where i can recoup and regain energy. Some people think I'm an extrovert because I act like an extrovert because that's what my role, what I feel my role needs to be. I need to be extra, uh, show that I'm an extrovert when I'm really an introvert. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> well, one of the things I wanted to add too is, um, so, so when you get into this world of, of graduate medical education, I, I don't know about you, but so over the years, my mind was blown, like, and then also that people don't know what we do or how a doctor is made in the U.S., right? And so when I used to sit in the clinic, um, they would say frequently, you know, Kimberly doesn't come out of her office, Kimberly this. So then I, you know, I worked in the clinic, but I was in the middle of resident stuff, like scheduling, um, you know, evaluations, you name it, you know what we do. And so what I enjoyed was the, uh, the clinic manager came in and said, you know, we, they, we have a very big team atmosphere and that's great. But she's like, could you come talk to us at lunch and tell us what you do? Why is your door always shut? Why this? Why that? Because they didn't know. And so that's also coaching and teaching the world about what we do and what the job is, because um, we're so busy. I've seen that where coaching is is not even something somebody can think about because we're so busy. I 
I've been there. <laughs> I am I I Kimberly, I'm sorry, but I'm loving so some of the comments we're we're getting here. Have you are you reading them? I am, and I'm also um an extroverted introvert, and I would be very interested to know how many of us are. So we 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 could do a Patrice is saying that you gave her a good idea of meeting the 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 clinic staff. And we can do, you know, we could do a session where we're talking about extroverted introverts and introverted extroverts <laughs> at the same time. So what coaching, you know, why coaching? Because even if you're working alone in a setting, you will you allow for optimization of the professional performance, not only of yourself, but also of your faculty and your residents. Remember, the residents seek guidance from us all the time, or ninety five percent of the time. So we, they see us as their coach, their mentor, their mother, their aunt, you know. Um, and we help them optimize their professional performance. It supports the learners, the learners, so they can prioritize their aspirations, their values, and their needs. So you feel that you need to gain more knowledge on something? Great, you know. Um, but also be con be conscientious of what you have to do to prioritize gaining that knowledge. Um, if you feel that's a priority, if not, you know find something else that you like that could that is a priority for you especially in this role for me it's um right now it my priority is teaching and learning how to teach and being some sort of mentor because honestly i'm a closeted teacher i wanted to be a teacher i did not see myself in this role and i'm happy uh to be in the i am so happy i love to be in this role and also, the coach helps in building foundational skills and behaviors. Simple, or, like simple organization um, skills, simple goal setting, uh, creating smart goals, stuff like that. Something that could be so simple is helpful to know and to help guide. So... Again, I mentioned this earlier, a coach doesn't need to be an expert or know everything about a topic to be a good coach because we tend to look up information. We are good. We are kind of researchers, but also we're learning from, a, from our coaches. Like Kimberly and others have mentioned, you know, you've been mentored, but you also learn from your mentees because they are looking for that information. They are learning themselves and you learn at the same time. Learning how to do a, a goal, writing a goal that you did not know was doable, you learned that. Learning how to um, manage your time in a better way or do a spreadsheet. Um in a better way, you know, those, the stuff that you learn at the same time as you, you teach them. And for me, that's really, really valuable. And, and honestly, I thought a coach had to be an expert in everything. And then I learned, no, I don't have to be an expert. I just have to be willing to guide the person and to be um, there for them as a support, even if it's, you know, sometimes happens that you got to call, hey, can I get some calls? Can you, you have time to guide me through this? I have some questions like, sure, you know, because there's no, I, I've, you, we are doing it. We are, and we're still learning. And sometimes I'm like, huh, interesting. Why didn't I think of that before? So all of this saying, you know, we, we are still learning and we are continuously learning. So some questions that um, you need to ask yourself before taking a, a role as a coach. 
what do I need? Do you need time? Obviously, we all need time. Let's be honest. Um, what else do we need? Do we need goals? Do we need to know certain things? Sometimes it's just about asking the right questions. What does mindful coaching look like now? How does my orientation impact my ability to sense what my clients need? You know, sometimes you, and I say it, I am not perfect. I don't know everything. I'm t I, tell, I, 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 I tell sometimes people like, don't, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm saying this wrong, if you think I'm taking this wrong, because that's part of the learning curve. You are in, um, encouraging the learner that it's okay to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes. How am I pretending to know the answers when I don't know or no one knows the answers? And how am I self-managing? And I want to open now the floor to see if there are other questions you might want to ask yourself in, in terms of either coaching or mentoring or advising. Feel free to unmute uh, and put in the chat if whatever you feel most comfortable with. Anybody? Sorry, I missed the question. Can you repeat it? Yes. So what um, other questions you want to ask yourself to, um, to know how you can be a coach or slash mentor or um, advisor to others? besides the questions I have posed here. Aria, it's Patrice. Mm -hmm. And I see um, Kim Kimberly's um, message in the chat where she says, I want to be a coach to empower others. Well, Kimberly, you and Aria have empowered me. <laughs> so, and, and it goes back to you think, when you think you're really not coaching or you're, you have, you empower so many people. I know, um, uh, I saw someone a couple of weekends ago in a, a church event and she came to me, she said, Patrice, thank you so much. You don't realize years ago when you did X, Y, Z, how that helped me to move forward in my nursing career. I had no idea what she was talking about. Really. I really, I said, I can't take credit for whatever I did because you did it. She said, what you said. And, and she had told me what I said, but really, I don't remember and I, I was I was in a coaching mode at that time. I didn't know that I was. So, you know, that just let me realize it to today, my today as a, a program coordinator, um, what I say to my residents, what I say to uh, faculty, how we interact, you know, how I express my opinion, which I'm lucky I'm in a program where I'm able to uh, give my, my side or my version or or what I feel, not that it's all, all, not that it's always right. And like Aria said, feel free to correct me and let them know. I don't get my feelings hurt easily, so they can share anything with me if something is not going right, or you know, they could just let me know. But um, from her telling me that, and I said, I guess I was in that mode years ago. I just didn't know it, but I felt like it wasn't on me. It was whatever she did with her career. It was on. Her, it was on her. And I was just sharing a part of me of what I felt because we learned from within our world at work and from outside. And we just bring it all together and we share that with others. Patrice, and let me just say this. Bravo. <laughs> I want to say too that when we get in this position and I've, so I, 
and some of you know, but I'm in a new position. Now. I'm no longer a program coordinator, but my heart is with you 100%. But I've moved to you and me where I'm counseling the students for residency placement, like for the first and year, second year students. And but it's it's humbling to move a new position when you've had one for 25 years. And while it's similar, it is not the same. And so I, I do a talk on imposter syndrome and I've done it here, but coaching and then being coached as well helps me get past my imposter syndrome. I suffer with that. And so, um, and then being open to what Aria said, tell me if I'm wrong. Like that's the best way to learn and being humble with that. Like, okay, I didn't know. I I didn't know on the UME side for TCOM, I'm at Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, how much we do with the students. And I'm very proud of that. Um, and I've even had some discussions about how I think we might handicap them to some degree when they get into residency, because residency is we don't hold hands. We can't, right? Because we're managing and things. But but my voice being heard and being accepted and then getting the different feedback, it just it helps my mind continue to grow in residency coordination. And I'm still doing some things, but you get in just your you have to get the next task done. You have to get the next task done. And then I think mentoring and coaching, the whatever whatever word you want to use keeps me keeps me in more of a servant mindset as well and we are servants right we're serving all these residents but that, that it all the openness back and forth just helps with what i struggle with on a daily basis as well and we've all been there right now i'm here you don't see it but like i'm moving my legs back and forth side to side because for me, talking with you guys, I feel like, am I doing this right? Because we're all suffer. Who 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 hasn't suffered from imposter syndrome in in their in their life? Let's be honest. Who hasn't? Because I feel we all have suffered from imposter syndrome. Because we feel like, why are we here? Do we belong here? <laughs> and then somebody posted uh on the chat that they think they're adaptable to how others learning styles are sometimes it just takes asking the right question how do you best learn i i am you know i tend to learn sometimes with paper I have my papers. I need to have my papers. I need to put notes. I have to highlight and stuff. Um, others are more auditive. Oh, I I learn by listening to everybody. I learn because I grasp everything when I listen. Others are more graphical, visual, not just, you know, the words, but graphics, you know. Um, I learn because I make Venn diagrams or I make uh, a, a, you know, any diagram that can help me learn because, you know, graphic is how I learn. So, you know, just asking the right questions and, and, you know, you try to adapt yourself. It takes time and it, it doesn't take, it's not instantaneous, but it really takes time to learn how others learn. And sometimes, and let me bring in honest, um, Example, my daughter, my daughter has dyslexia and, you know, I sit down with her to do her homework almost every day and her learning style is that she needs to be encouraged. She needs to know that we're there, we're helping there, her because if not, she gets distracted so easily, you know. And, and sometimes it's just a matter of telling them, hey, you know, we are learned differently. We know we are brilliant. We are intelligent. So it's just a matter of how we, we, we do this learning. So I am so happy that I'm able to bring this to all of you because I am learning as the same time I'm telling you about this, I am learning what all of you are saying and, you know, how many instances we in the, inadvertently have helped others 
um, be better in, in their job, in their personal life, wherever. And yes, I um, agree with the comment where it says that we grow our a thick skin where you know we learn because i think in the in the beginning we're learning we're overwhelmed but then we're just like okay this is this is not working for me now let me learn how to do it another way so let's talk about some of the types of questions you want to ask when you are applying coaching Remember, you, we've done this multiple times. We just didn't know that these were the questions that we were that they, they were asking. You know, give not only know the questions, but give the the person, the learner, the coachee, the mentoree, what the advisee, whatever. Give them a safe space. Let them know that they are safe to talk about anything. Ask anything. It doesn't get out of there. They have to earn, earn your trust and you have to earn their trust. Um, encourage realistic expectations. What do you want to learn right now? What do you feel like, especially when we've talked with residents and the residents talk about research, you know, they have to be realistic with their research. Sometimes we dream very high up in the sky and we cannot reach that goal yet. Allow the learner to identify their own strengths. We all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. We all have our opportunities for improvement. And we have our threats. This classic SWAT. So what are their strengths? Um, we have to take responsibility for what we learn. The learner has to take their own responsibility. Have, make sure they're accountable for it. Um, encourage them to be open and honest. And there will always be setbacks. That's okay. You know, I I sometimes feel like I failed and failed multiple times. But hey, if I don't fail, I don't learn. And if I am perfect all the time, I'm boring. I prefer not to be boring. Let me be honest with you. Some of the questions, depending on the strategy, and this is shared from a presentation, the from the coaching presentation I was talking to you about, where what strategy questions, um, some questions of strategies um, for the coachee, you know, strength based coaching, how they envision their future, building relationships, promote environment of safety, trust, and respect. Meeting. If you have you do a formal coaching, remember to have those meetings, even if it's once a quarter. Appreciate inquiry. Ask, not tell. Let them tell you. Let ask the questions. And obviously, there are some other techniques that I can go about, but right now I am not in the right set of mind to explain to them because I still am learning them. I still have to read more to so I can learn, uh, I can know what I can say to you guys. And then there are, you know, other types of questions that you will, you, you ask them, you know, who are you becoming? What's getting better? Are you taking care of yourself? How are you attending to your emotions? You know, make it, because this is not only academic, this also can be, um, regaining relationship, um, making sure their well-being is taken care of, making sure that they are um, grateful, how they are um, developing themselves. So it's just not academic. You can be, you can ask them questions just to make sure that they are doing overall well. So with all of this, I bring back the question. After we talk about this, you gave me great examples and everything. Can you really be a coach? Do you feel empowered enough to at least start trying, you know, um, not, not, you know, unintentionally, but with intention, with the renewed intention that you can be a coach? I feel so, but what about you? Feel free to unmute or put in the chat your thoughts.
Anybody? Yes, based on new coordinator needs. Anybody else who would like to jump in? Okay, it's okay. I love it. Thank you for your honesty. Mm hmm Remember, this is this is our safe space. You can be completely honest with with us here. It's okay if you're not ready. Yes, we are kind of coaching without realizing it. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And the other thing you could do is um, I'm talking... Okay, I'm I'm reading your comments and this is amazing. These comments are amazing. Um, the other thing you could do is ask your supervisor if it's your program director, if you have um another person who is your direct supervisor. Um, ask them for their advice, you know, their feedback on how you can do better. Let me ask this question. Somebody posted in the chat, do we need coaching or motivation and inspiration? <laughs> That's right. We need all. <laughs> I wanted to say when um, Nicole, who's not here today, but in Ariana started this group it was um an okr so it was one of our things were measured on you know i don't know the, that what the acronym means but you know our evaluation every year so that's what we started and to me the community we've started here um has been very informal coaching but also um but also a safe space so that's why i like that i try to say that and aria says it and patrice has been here since the beginning and but, you know, there was not any of these spaces previous to this. There are some other groups that have developed from this. Um, and I'm glad that we've kept this very, while we learn and we're professional, it's also an informal place. And uh, so I, I I think we this community has helped coaching in a very informal way. We've provided, um, number one, and we've stepped out of our comfort zone. I know I did. Um, Patrice has stepped out of hers and spoken here and, and, you know, had presentations and others and, um, it, and anyone is invited to speak. If there's a topic that you're interested in or you want to learn more about, this is the perfect place to start. And, but I mean, we're how, how many, are we a year in Aria or over a year, right? Yeah. We're about three years since we originally started. Right. Right. And so, um, the platform I think is just, it, I think it's been I'm very proud of it, um, and I love the the safe space aspect of it. So, anybody else? All right. So these are some of the resources that I use to prepare this presentation. Uh, one of them is the coaching and medical education book. Um, I got it during um, my workshop, attending the workshop. And it's a really good resource. Um, the other one is coaching and medical education, the faculty handbook. That one is free in the AMA website. And there's other articles that you could look for. And then if you're thinking about which questions you want to ask, this book is amazing. 
it helps you determine which questions you can ask. Um, and I I remember um, yesterday going through my notes and I was like, oh, I have that book. And I marked it and I'm hoping to retake it again and, and just going through it. Um, again, I'm a nerd. <laughs> the name is Ask Powerful Questions. Create conversations that matter. It's in Amazon. I think it's less than $20. So it's a good book. It has a lot of resources, honestly. All right. So any questions you might have before we close our session for today? Um, any comments? Any concerns? Can you uh, post the name of the book in the chat when you get a chance, Aria? Yes. The next session is um, in November. We are talking about developing and nurturing relationships. Uh, I will send out the copy of the other coaching handbook, the one that is free. I will send it in an email because I have it. I actually, um, I actually printed it because, again, this is how I learn. This is how I do research. <laughs> so I will send it uh, via email. Any other questions, any other concerns? I'll just share something from my perspective at my institution. Um, I, I love joining these sessions and I don't always speak up, um, but I'll share from, from my own experience. Um, I join, whether, you know, you choose to formally mentor or coach or informally mentor or coach, I was empowered um, by my supervisor to do it formally for some time. And it wasn't something that I was interested in doing. Um, I think we're all in our own right, juggling multiple things um, in what we do. Um, but I very much enjoyed informally mentoring and coaching and just creating safe space and inclusive space within my own community. I remember coming into this role and remember that there weren't many administrators or coordinators that, you know, identified with me. Um, but I did join what was our um, School of Medicine mentee program last year. Um, and through that was able to have a mentor that um, did identify and create inclusive safe space and and help you know provide that space for growth and opportunities for me. Um, and then the opportunity came for me to apply to be a mentor. And um, I was like, okay, I still don't want to do this. <laughs> Um, but then I had to remember what it was like for me when I came into this role and that there weren't many mentors that looked like me. And then that was like when I had the vision, okay, you will be planting the seed of changing the landscape and then it will start to multiply if you help cultivate, you know, you know, be, be part of the change of the vision that you hope to see and that you're help promoting those that will come and see that there are opportunities for promotion. So, you know, if anyone has um, any apprehension around formally putting themselves out there, um, I just want to encourage you that formally putting yourself out there helps to put it on your CVs or your resumes and then you're cultivating those that are coming behind you um, to give them opportunities to apply that are maybe clinical spaces that can come into academia that will help bringing in, you know, the next generations to give them hope and opportunities. Bravo, bravo. I love those words. Anybody else would like to comment?
All right. If anybody, if nobody else wants to comment, I will um, leave it here. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, our community has grown so, so much in the past three years. And I hope that, um, um, that you can join us next month and happy recruitment because we're all in that mindset right now. Like we're recruiting, we're reviewing applications. So if anybody needs any support, feel free to reach us. We are completely available um, and we have our Facebook group. Please share um, the Facebook group, even though it's for the Academy and we share presentations, feel free to share stuff there to any questions you might have. Remember, this is our safe space and I hope um, we can see you next time. Kimberly is sharing on the chat she is doing a red flag survey what red flags you see in the applications um that may consider that you may not consider for somebody for interview feel free to fill it out um and we'll and she shared it in the facebook group and i'll share it via email too so because we need that input we we see a lot of red flags we do <laughs> I'm I'm getting I'm doing the research for a presentation probably in April at a at a bigger group, but I I plan to come back here and share it. But Aria looked at just a few responses we got yesterday, and it, they were very um, interesting. Yeah, so if you guys have time, it's an anonymous survey. So, oh, okay, thanks, Lizette. Liz, I'll try to fix that. Okay. <laughs> The Facebook group is Academy for Program Coordinators, and I will share that link also in the email. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and your input. I love you. Mwah. See you next month.